We're going to start with the toughest question. Tell me your name and who are you? Uh, well, my name is uh, Brameet Singh Sarkaria and I'm your MPP elect uh, for Brampton South. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, a uh, proud Bramptonian, um, been living here for a long time, uh, grew up here. Um, it's been, uh, you know, so great to meet so many residents in the city and, uh, you know, worked on so many different, uh, uh, with so many different organizations here. I started off uh, uh, working with uh, something I founded with a, a couple of friends of mine, uh, Hockey for Humanity, uh, an organization where we um, host uh, charity ball uh, hockey tournaments. Um, grew, it started with... Yeah, a hockey player? Uh, oh, yeah, I, you know, I love hockey. <laughs> I love hockey, I love basketball, I uh, grew up playing football as well, rugby, so anything uh, sports-wise, uh, I love it. And so, you know, a couple of friends got, got together, uh, got an idea that, you know, we need to get, uh, uh, take some of these kids off the street, get them busy. So we started organizing uh, ball hockey tournaments. Uh, and so we've got probably one of the largest charity ball hockey tournaments now, and every single year we donate, it, uh, donate the proceeds to a different um, organization or charity. And uh, I've also had worked... Uh, on a neat initiative uh, called Garma Grow, which is basically uh, we get uh, farmers or we get uh, um, you know anyone who has uh, spare land uh, to donate it to us, and we harvest vegetables over um, over the, the summer and uh, then donate the uh, produce to, to people in need or uh, to food banks. And so, so you were doing this long before you entered politics, while you were practicing law? Yes, while I was practicing law, while I was studying law, uh, I've always kept my uh, you know I've always been connected to the grassroots. And I've, and that's the reason I really got into politics because I felt there was a huge disconnect between uh, Bramptonians and Queens Park, and that they needed a strong voice, uh, a voice that would be willing to champion issues of Brampton. So, so you're practicing law. How many how many years have you been working as a lawyer? So I, I was called to the bar in 2015. Uh, so I've been so three years. Yes. So what? Why now? Why enter politics now? You're 29 years old. Uh, why not four years from now? What was it that drew you into it now, to to abandon your your law practice for now? Well, you know, there was, uh, you know, we were at a crossroads in this province. Uh, we saw 15 years of uh, liberal waste, mismanagement, uh, and spending. And so we had to really look at the future of this province and where we wanted to take it. And being involved in the community and, um, and, and listening to so many people, uh, they really needed a voice at Brampton. And, and I thought I could be that voice. And we campaigned very hard. We knocked on so many doors. And we saw the frustration. So it's been very worth it. And, and Did, we, were you always aspiring to be a politician? You know what? I was actually uh, never always aspiring. I was always just trying to keep myself uh, connected to the community, uh, work on different initiatives, help out wherever I could. Uh, and then it, you know, it, it, there was an opportunity where I was just like, you know, we can really make a big difference here because the government has really lost its way, and we need to make sure that we elect a government um, and candidates across this province that can, uh, you know, really work for the people that uh, that that elected them. So tell me more about you as a, a person. So it sounds like you're a humanitarian. You've been involved in a lot of charity work. You love sports. You practice law. What else should we know about you? This is sort of a get to know you interview and who you are behind the politician that we're, we're about to, to watch evolve. You know, I'm just, a, you know, I'm a normal Bramptonian. That's how I like to describe myself. I'm, uh, you know, I love watching uh, sports. I love playing sports. Uh, I, I try to keep myself uh, as accessible as, as possible. And I want to kind of uh, change the way people do politics around here. The politics about serving the people and being accessible to the people that elected you and really listening to their concerns. Um, you know, in my spare time, I also, uh, you know, love hanging out with my wife, my beautiful wife who has supported me all along um, and uh, encouraged me every step of the way. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's been a great journey and uh, I look forward to continuing it with her uh, in the next uh, forever. You've been described to me by somebody who knows a lot uh, about politics as someone to watch, somebody who is the future bright rising star within government. Do you see a long future? Do you have like a long-term aspiration to be a politician for the next decade, two decades? Well, I think I'm just very excited right now to to be elected uh, and as as an MPP, uh, and, and across uh, across the province, we have such a great team of so many qualified candidates, and it's the reason we've uh, you know elected a majority PC government. Uh, my goal is to serve uh, the people of Brampton South, and I want to continue serving forever, uh, for as long as they they think that I deserve uh, to be their MPP, and I want to prove to them that you know I'm always going to listen to them. I'm always going to pick up their phone calls when they call me. Um, you know, I've I've tweeted 
tweeted out my personal cell number to all of my constituents, and I'll even tweet it out or say it right here: four one six five five eight zero zero five seven. Oh, you I may won't... regret that. You know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know we've been elected to serve the people, and if I can't be accessible, and I don't think I'm doing my job, so I want to make sure that uh, I reach every single Bramptonian and Brampton South and across Brampton, and, and really, uh, if we if we lose touch with the people that we that elected us, then we're going to be in trouble. And I think if I can keep connected to those people, um, I'll be uh, in a great position going forward. So what, in your mind, is the number one issue? I mean, during the election campaign, we, we heard about taxes and gas prices and hydro and hallway medicine. What is the one thing that you would love to focus on to make a difference? I really want to focus on respecting taxpayer money. You know, I, when I was knocking doors, I saw families, um, you know, struggling to put food on the table. I met uh, mothers who were working uh, 14 hours a day, two shifts, and it really angers me and frustrates me when, you know, they're paying their hard-earned money and they're sending it to Queen's Park, and they expect that money to be respected, and they expect that money uh, to come back into their pockets, not into the insiders. Or, um, and, and so that's what I really, I really want to make sure that, you know, any, every single dollar, every single penny that goes to Queen's Park, uh, gets respected and we put it uh, towards you know, the people who deserve it the most. You're 29. There are a lot of new MPPs who are millennials. Do you think that that's going to add to the government? Do you think that that, that will change the way the government works at Queen's Park? I, I co completely do. It's a, a diverse group of candidates, young candidates, and sometimes the, the younger population, is, some of us younger, uh, you know, we, we get overlooked. And I think this is a great opportunity for, uh, you know, the younger generation to have a voice. And, and it's a new movement we've created, and it's uh, there's a reason there's so many of us. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a great party that uh, has united us uh, uh, under a great leader like uh, Doug Ford. Um, just a common, you know, message of change uh, for the people, uh, working, you know, changing the way gov uh, government uh, is run. And, and so I think that's uh, that's why you see so many millennials uh, and so many young people attracted to the Ontario PC party. I'm sure you know it's not going to be an easy job. You know, there are tough decisions that have to be made. Uh, you know, there are going to have to be some cutbacks to, to balance the books. How are you going to manage all of that and, and, and keeping, you, you're, no politician can keep everyone happy and they have to make some really difficult decisions. How do you think that's going to impact you? Well, I think uh, the, the priority is to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we continue governing uh, and, and looking out for the people. Uh, we want to make sure that every decision we make uh, represents the best interests of this province uh, and moves this province forward. We want to make sure that we're open for business. Uh, we want to make sure that we create growth uh, in our economy. We want to make sure that we bring relief uh, to the hydro bills and, and, you know, decrease taxes because when we can do that, everybody in Ontario can prosper and everybody in Ontario will have more money in their pockets and, and we can move forward together. Are you nervous? I'm excited. <laughs> I've been uh, giggling ever since I got elected and I'm just uh, living, the, living the dream and I'm, and I'm so happy uh, that the people of uh, Brampton South uh, uh, elected me and I'm forever grateful to them uh, for giving me this honour. And when you look forward, you know, four years from now, maybe eight years from now, what vision do you have for yourself? I mean, everybody sort of has to have goals and what they'd like to do next now that you've reached this milestone. So what's, what's the next goal that you will have in mind for yourself? My goal is is Brampton. My goal is to bring Brampton uh, to to the superpower I believe it can be. Uh, whether it's bringing jobs here, it's making sure uh, the youth of Brampton get the employment that they deserve. It's making sure that our hospital has the funding it deserves. So I want to be a, a champion for the city, a champion for the city at Queens Park and across this country, where we can bring and we can make sure that um, you know. Brampton finally has a voice that's willing to work for it and uh, finally has a friend at Queen's Park that can bring in some much needed relief to the city. So if you could sit down with Doug Ford right now, what would you say to him on my constituents in Brampton need X right now? What would that be? I think they need relief um, within their pockets and I think uh, our platform was very clear that they're going to deliver that, uh, whether it's uh, relief on the hydro bills, uh, whether it's uh, the tax cut for the middle income families. I think that's really what uh, Bramptonians are looking forward to, just having some extra money in their pocket and I'm confident that we are going to bring that with uh, Premier Doug Ford. Is there anything unique to Brampton? 
that you would ask for? Well, uniquely to Brampton is actually a great that you bring it up is auto insurance. We actually pay some of the highest auto insurance mm -hmm. of, in all of Ontario. And actually my postal code uh, in Brampton South has the actual, it's the highest postal code in all of Brampton. So that's another issue that I really want to really work on. Because How would you tackle that? Well, it's about uh, you know uh, making sure that uh, uh, we fight against uh, unfair practices that are being used by some of the insurance companies, and we got to make sure we reduce the fraud, and we have uh, uh, ways to do that. Uh, we investigate the root cause of the problem because we know that last time Kathleen Wynne, um, before you know in 2014, promised a 15 percent reduction in auto insurance rates, but that didn't happen, and, and so we got to make sure that we find the root cause of the problem and we tackle that problem and uh, make sure we make uh, uh, life more affordable for all Bramptonians. Well, it's going to be very exciting to watch you over the next four years, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you.